Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video on the Team Black Sheep multi-bind feature. Now this is something that isn't new, it's been kicking around a little while. It's been on my list to make a video about for ages and I've had a couple of people get in touch over the last week or two saying, I've watched loads of videos, it still doesn't make sense. Can you explain what multi-bind is and how I set it up? So this is my video on Team Black Sheep multi-bind. Now, before we get too far into this, let's talk about what multi-bind actually is. Now, the way it normally works is that you bind your Crossfire module or something like your TBS Tango 2 radio to the receiver that's in the model. And that copies the unique identifier for the radio module onto the receiver. And that's part of the binding process and part of the security and handshaking that goes on. So then in future, when you turn it on, the receiver will connect only to the radio module that has that same ID. And that's the way it normally works. So every radio uh, crossfire module has their own uh, unique identifier and the bind process is just copying it onto the receiver. Now that does mean though that if you have multiple modules, so like me, for example, you know, with the radio master with my crossfire in here, uh, I have another crossfire in my Tyrannus radio and I have the Tango 2 as well. What would be really nice is if they all talk to each other so that I didn't have to rebind if I wanted to use another crossfire module. Because right now, if I bind the receiver to this module and then go to the field, I'd have to rebind it to the Tango 2 if that was the radio I had in the day. Multibind allows the receiver to talk to multiple modules by giving the modules all the same ID. So let me jump on a couple of slides and explain that in a little bit more detail so that you can see what I'm banging on about and then I'll actually show you how to set it up. So again, let's very quickly cover how it actually works without multi-bind. So here we have a radio with a module in the back and also a Tango 2 below. And we've got a couple of crossfire receivers. And the way it normally works is that the radio, as I said, will have a unique identifier. And that unique identifier will be copied across to the receiver when the bind is done. And then because both of the ends have the same number in there, that's part of the bind, and they will need to see that same number at the other end in order to connect to each other. And if we then bound a Tango 2 to another receiver, my Tango 2 is going to have another unique ID. So when I bind to that crossfire receiver, that is going to have a different number. And that means that I can't then talk to the crossfire receiver at the top that's bound to my normal radio with my Tango 2 and vice versa, because the crossfire receivers will only talk to the radios that have the same ID. Now, to get around this, what TBS have done is quite smart, is they give all their systems the ability to have another system-wide ID, if you want to think of it like that, or cloud ID. So to set this up, it's all covered in the documentation, quite simply. There aren't that many steps to go through, and hopefully now you have a better idea of what's actually going on by the end of the video, the instructions will make a little bit more sense. So the first thing you need to do is go on to the TBS Agent X, create yourself an account and log in, and then connect all of the Crossfire bits and pieces into there and make sure that you keep it all powered on until the little green light at the top comes on. And that means that all of the information about your kit has been stored with your profile. It's also a good idea to update it to the latest and greatest version of the software as well. Now, as part of that, there is a cloud ID created that's unique to your account. And that cloud ID sits in the TBS cloud. All of the multibind stuff is all part of the TBS cloud stuff. I'll put a link down below to my other videos on TBS cloud that talk about other things that you can do with it. So what you can do then is you can connect to a Wi-Fi access point with your Crossfire system. And then because the TBS systems know about the serial number that's on there already, it will identify it and it will then download the cloud ID onto the radio. So where you end up with then is each of the radios that you own, the Crossfire radios, will actually end up 
with a couple of different IDs. You'll have the original unique ID that they started out with, and through the virtue of the fact that you've just connected to the Wi-Fi access point, it will have then copied down the cloud ID that's unique to your account and pop that into the radio crossfire system as well. Now, the one you use depends on the settings that you select. If you select multi-bind as the option in the Crossfire menus on your Crossfire radio, then it's going to use the cloud ID. And because both of the radios have the same cloud ID, when you bind to the receiver, the receiver learns that new cloud ID, and that means then that the receiver will talk to both of the radios. So hopefully now you understand what the instructions are actually telling you to do, let me actually very quickly show you how I'm going to do it on this radio here. So the process we are going to follow is exactly as described in the Team Black Sheep Crossfire multi-bind manual. Well, it's kind of a couple of pages of stuff. It goes through each of the stages, so let me show you what they look like. At the top, though, do be aware that there are a couple of prerequisites. Your Crossfire transmitter needs to be on firmware 3.7 or later with a Wi-Fi module. Uh, most of them have, so you don't need to worry about that. You need to also have downloaded and installed TBS Agent X. Uh, link to that in the description below. And you need to have set yourself up an account in there. That's probably stuff you've already got if you're a Team Black Sheep uh, Crossfire user or Tracer user. And you're going to need an internet connection. Uh, just once to get the data onto the Crossfire module and then you're good to go. So before I set this up, let me very quickly show you what the radio looks like and what you will see in the menus before you have enabled multi-bind. You will notice that in the menus, the multi-bind isn't available as an option and scrolling down to the bottom, you'll also see that the user ID is blank. The user ID is going to be filled because that's kind of that cloud ID that I've just talked about, that's where it's all going to be held. And when that is populated, we'll know the process has worked. So first job then is going to be to plug your Crossfire module into the computer, start your Agent X and let it synchronize. Wait until the little LEDs in the top right hand corner go green and then you are good. And what's happening here is the serial number and details of your Crossfire module are being copied up onto the Team Black Sheep servers so that it knows who you are and associates the, the device and your account and everything all together. Now, with that bit done, the next part then is to connect the Crossfire module to your Wi-Fi. Not sure why this can't be done through the agent, because it's already connected to the internet via the USB cable, but it's a separate process. So what we have to do is connect it to the internet via any internet access port, and the Crossfire module will go and speak to the Team Black Sheep servers and download your unique cloud ID. Now, there are two ways we can do this. The easiest way is to do it through the Agent X. You can actually go and connect to everything here. It's a lot easier to do, in my humble opinion, through this interface. You only have to do it once, and then once it's all done, it'll work fine. If, however, you don't want to use the agent or something isn't working properly, then you can do it through the Lua script on the radio. The Lua script and the layout of the Lua script on the Radio Master uh, isn't brilliant, in my humble opinion. Just uh, needs a little bit of a tweak at the moment because putting in things like the password for the Wi-Fi uh, gets a little bit messy. But when you've got the password in, click on Connect and then you should see it connecting, it will get an IP address, and then after a couple of seconds, what you can do is go back out of that into the settings for the Crossfire module, and then magically you'll see that multi-bind has appeared. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll also see that the user ID has appeared at the bottom as well. Now, at this point, you've done all the hard work. You can go back into the Wi-Fi settings on your Crossfire module and turn that off, uh, unless you're going to be using the cloud stuff, in which case it can be handy to turn them on. Pro tip from me is if you're struggling with your home Wi-Fi, just create a, an access point on your phone and use that. That can sometimes be a little bit easier and gets around. Sometimes you'll find that you'll bump into things like VPN and kind of uh, security issues. But once it's done, you're set. 
And the last thing to do then is to bind to your receiver. So if you've got a bound receiver, uh, while it's still connected already, just bind and update it with the multi-bind turned off as you would normally. And while it's still connected, turn the multi-bind on. After a few seconds, the link will come back on and the receiver will catch up and be using the new multi-bind identifier with that new cloud ID. That now means that any Crossfire system that has that cloud ID or user ID on it, that unique identifier to you, will be able to talk to that receiver without any problems at all. To then bind to that receiver with a second Crossfire module, all you have to do is just turn on multi-bind and because you've already gone through the same process and downloaded the user ID or the cloud ID onto that module, it has the same number or identifier, it'll just bind automatically to that receiver. If you want to disable multi-bind, it's the same process the other way around. While you're connected to the Crossfire receiver in the model with a multi-bind setting, if while you're still connected, you go into the settings and disable the multi-bind, then after a few moments, it'll default back to the standard setup using the unique identifier for your radio and that'll stop multi-bind working. So there actually shouldn't be any need for you to do any binding or rebinding of the receivers. So long as you have an active connection while you're turning on the multi-bind or turning off the multi-bind, the receiver will catch up and figure it out. So there you go. It's not that difficult, is it? All it's about doing is making sure that the kit that you're using is synchronized up to the TBS cloud, turning on the Wi-Fi on your Crossfire system so that it can download a unique user ID that's specific to you. And that cloud ID then is kind of set, kept on here. And it's the same for all of your kit. And then by selecting multi-bind in the menu, you can bind to the receiver using that unique ID. And because that unique ID is on all your Crossfire kit, it means you can uh, connect to that receiver no matter which Crossfire transmitter you're using. Now, this is only one of the cool things that you can do with the TBS Cloud. Having all your TBS uh, system working together means you can do some pretty fab stuff. So check out some of my other videos on the TBS Cloud pieces. But hopefully for those of you that were confused about what it is, how it works and what it does, that's a little bit clearer. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.